Hey guys, it's Ashley, and today's video is going to be on Revelation chapter 7, so stick with me to hear what I have to say. All right, guys, so verse 1 says, After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. So, after these things, John just got done seeing the seals unravel in front of him. And if I was John, I'd probably be like, holy smokeroos, that was a lot to just take in. And so this is why I really believe that God allowed these angelic pauses these angelic explanations in the midst of the chronological events in the book of Revelation. So John and those reading the book of Revelation kind of catch their breath and get some insight. And so Revelation 7 is a chapter where there's that angelic explanation. And so John saw these seals and then he sees these four angels standing at the four corners of the earth and they're holding back the four winds. Let's look at chapter or verse two. It says, then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. And so I see these four angels as north, south, east, and west, and they were granted to harm the earth. I see some of this being the seals, amongst other things. But another angel says, he comes and he's like, no, no, wait, before you do that, just, just wait. We need to seal the, you know, the people uh, of God. Verse three, it says, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of God on their foreheads. Verse 4, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. So I'm assuming that John's like, Whew, okay, like, all those, although the seals are going to manifest, there's going to be the servants of God, the 144,000 that will be sealed. And so he's probably feeling a lot better. He's like, okay, there's going to be some protection. Now, you might be thinking, well, why just 144,000? Like, that doesn't really seem like a lot. I really believe that these 144,000 are specifically for those that are in the that Jerusalem, Israel area. So when the Antichrist rises up and says that he is God, that's the abomination of desolation, a lot of the seals and the trumpets and the bulls, a lot of the disturbances that are going to be happening, I really see happening right there in that Jerusalem, Israel area. And so these 144,000 are from that geographic area. That's just my interpretation. So they're sealed because the heartbeat of everything that's going to happen, I believe, will be in that Jerusalem, Israel area. So these people have that like seal of protection like on their foreheads. Now, what about the Christians that are outside of Israel? Let's say those who are in America. I believe we're going to be sealed to a degree as well. Now, we won't have the same type of seal like on their foreheads. I think they specifically get the forehead seal. But we too will be sealed to a degree. In a lot of scriptures in the Bible talk about being sealed. This is one of them. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit as a down payment of our eventual total redemption. Paul wrote, God, who has also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. And that's in 2 Corinthians 
chapter 1, verses 21 through 22. And so there's more scriptures on us being sealed, but right there, we are sealed as well. Now, I don't see a lot of the plagues happening. Like, I should be careful with how I say this. I think the plagues will touch all aspects of the world, but the majority of them and the severity of them are going to be where the Antichrist is and where the Antichrist army is. And I really believe that that will be in that Jerusalem, Israel area. Yes, it'll unravel throughout the world, but not to the same degree as it'll be in that Jerusalem, Israel area. That's just my two cents. That's just my two cents. It's kind of where I'm at right now as I study the book of Revelation. Maybe as years go by, my interpretation will change. And so that again gives me peace that maybe we in America won't be as sealed as those in Israel, but I don't see us seeing the severity of the judgments like the people in Israel will. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? And so this angelic pause explanation is good because I think it's bringing comfort to John, okay? So now John is going to see another people group. So he just got done seeing the 144,000 people group. Now, in verse 9, it says, after these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hand. All right, so now there's another group, the great multitude. So much that you couldn't even number them, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues. It's interesting. This was David Guzik. He says, because John knew they came from different nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, we know that there will be differences among people in heaven, just as there is on earth. We will not all be the same. We will be individuals. And that's, that's true, because he's in heaven. He's seen this great multitude of all nations and peoples and tongues. And so if there's different nationalities up there, as it is down here, I mean, then there's individualism in heaven. So I think that's kind of cool note. All right, so palm branches. What do palm branches mean? Palm branches in, in, um, can represent victory. And so if you'd, got, if you'd get a palm branch back in the day, it, it just meant that there was some type of, of, of victorious, something you, you did was victorious. That's just kind of how I'm seeing this. And then white robes. Well, what do we know about white robes? Remember in the fifth seal, who were given white robes? Those who are martyred. And so just kind of kind of put that, that back, you know, over here. So scripture goes on. So this great multitude, they were crying with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Okay, so they're speaking out. Salvation belongs to our God. And it's true, we can only be saved by God. Only be saved by Jesus and what he did on the cross. And that's what they're speaking out. And then the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, might be to God forever and ever. So it's interesting. We see this a lot in Revelation, all the different groups up there. Now there's a lot of them. We've seen the four living creatures and the elders and the angels and animals and and the martyrs, and now we're seeing this great multitude. 
And, and whenever one group does something, another group does something else. Like they back each other up and they praise with one another. And so right now we saw this great multitude and they were speaking about God's salvation. And the four living creatures and the elders and, and the angels, they, they said, amen. Like amen to salvation only belongs to God. And then they said all these other praises. So I think that's really interesting and we can really learn about these people groups and how they go back and forth with just worshiping and declaring, you know, who God is and, and, and affirming just who God is. So, so verse 13, then one of the elders answered saying to me, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? It's interesting because I think John was, questioning that in his mind. I think John was like, okay, now who is this people group? This great multitude, like what? And so that elder, he, he answers well, with a question, who are these arrayed in, in white robes? And where did they come from? So John says, sir, you know. And so the elder said, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. So they came out of the great tribulation. What does that mean? So the great tribulation, I believe, is the specific last three and a half years of the seven year tribulation. And they came out of it. I really see them coming out of it because of martyrdom. And so John, I think, is putting two and two together. I, 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 I see John seeing, wow, like this is the manifestation of the, the fifth seal. Remember the fifth seal where there was the martyrs and they were in heaven, they were crying out for God's vengeance and they were then told just rest a little longer because there's going to be more martyrdom that takes place. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but that's what the fifth seal is saying. And I'm wondering if perhaps now John is seeing holy cow, it's come to pass now. Like, there will be more that get martyred. But, but look at them. They're arrayed in white robes. They're holding that palm branch. They were victorious. They didn't back down. They kept their faith. It's just a thought. And so, scripture continues. Therefore, they are before the throne, this great multitude, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. The lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. And so even though they were martyred, and that's just my assumption right now. This great multitude was, you know, martyred. Happy ending, happy ending. They are acknowledged for what they did. They're not hungry anymore. They're not thirsty. All their tears are wiped away. They're serving God. What is that going to look like? That is like, wow, like, what are you doing up there? You're not just on a cloud with a harp. No, like you're doing stuff in heaven if you are martyred or not, like you, you are, but, but they're serving God, like they're doing stuff. And so I think John, I, I have to believe that John was like, okay, okay. So either you're sealed, you're a part of that 144,000, or you get martyred. But no matter what, it's a win-win. And I think that really brought calmness to John's heart by what he saw in those seven seals and also what will take place with the trumpets and, 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 and everything else that will unravel and with the rest of the book of Revelation. So that is how I'm interpreting chapter seven right now. So this is my question. Well, what do you think about that? How, what do you think about my interpretation? Would you agree or would you lovingly disagree? And then what do you think about, you know, if we are here during those seven years, we'll either be sealed to a degree of some kind or we'll be martyred. Are you okay with that?
when I say that, does that sit well in your heart or do you feel like that is like contradicting itself? So what are your thoughts about that? Me, I think it's perfectly okay. I think it's perfectly okay that there is this this chance of being sealed. Now, I won't be one of those 144,000 because I'm not in Israel. I'm not an Israelite, you know, but but um, I, I could be sealed. I, I could go through the seven years here in America. I mean, maybe God will have me somewhere else, but uh, I, I do believe there is this chance where um, I won't, well, I won't take the mark of the beast. Absolutely no way. But I do believe that God could supernaturally provide for me. I could go through the seven years and, and, and conquer and win. I do believe that. And if that doesn't happen to me, well, then I will be most likely martyred, but I'm okay with that too. And so for me, I feel like it's a win-win no matter what. I, I win if I, I get through it, obviously, but then I also win if I get martyred because then I'm in heaven and I'm serving the Lord. And before I know it, I'll be back down here with my resurrected body reigning with Christ. And so that's my two cents, guys. I hope everyone's doing well and have a good day. All right, bye.